Hey guys, welcome back to another section in this video column. In my last video, when I started off, I told you uh, some basics about the navigational subject and we took up the topic of celestial sphere. Today, in this video, in this follow up video, we are going to take up another basic topic but from the another subject that is chart work, another important subject of a field. And when we start off with chart work, there are some basic terms with which we need to familiarize first. The very first term which comes into our mind is chart datum. So what does chart datum mean? Now chart datum is the lowest astronomical tide. In other words, you could call it as it is the lowest available depth of water at any given time at any place throughout the year. For example, suppose this is my seabed. Now, if this is my chart datum, so it simply means that in any phase of the year, water level at this place cannot or should not go below this chart datum level. Now, it means when it should go higher than the datum level. Now, when I ask this question, a lot of people tend to give the answer as the high tide, which is wrong. It is not the high tide which only increases the water level, it is any tide which can increase the water level. That means it could be a low tide or a high tide. Well, I, I will just explain you this a bit. Suppose this chart datum depth is say 30 meters, which is written on the chart, which is also the charted depth. And suppose in the evening 4 p.m., a tide of 2 meters, a low tide of 2 meters comes to this place. So now the water level will rise by 2 meters and my total depth will come out to be 30 plus 2, which is 32 meters. Suppose in the same place in the evening at 8 p.m. a high tide of 6 meter occurs. So now from this place the water level will rise by 6 meters and now my final to total depth of water will be 30 plus 6 which is equal to 36 meters. So the result of this that we understand is that height of tide Whatever the height, it is not that important. The thing that is important is that whatever the height of tide at any place is, it is always, always increasing the depth of water. And that means it should always be added to chart data or charted depth to get your total depth of water at that time. I hope this part is clear to you. Now, another term that comes to my mind is obviously the types of charts. How many types of charts are there and what is the basis in which they are divided? In short and briefly, if I explain you this, there are basically two main types of divisions that, that has been done to charts. The first one is obviously which is based on the scale of the charts and there are two divisions to it. One is large scale, another is small scale chart. Now large scale chart obviously by the term you could have understood. It means, see, the size of chart is fixed by the UKH or the UK Hydrographic Office from where the charts are being released. The size of chart is fixed. Now. If the size of chart is fixed, then that doesn't mean that if we are representing any region of a different size, we'll be able to change the size of chart. So it simply means that if the size is fixed, then any amount or any size of region that you are predicting or depicting on that same chart has to be scaled. And that is why this division has been created. So on a large scale chart, what happens, you are representing as a smaller region with a, a larger scale and since you are depicting a smaller region on a larger scale that means you can present it with more amount of details and by nature of this scale drawing the large scale charts are usually used in coastal navigation because that is the place where you require more detailings and more aspects for safety of navigation such as lighthouses, records, then the coast, local coastal region, geographical condition of the region, then the anchorage areas, fishing traffic zones, TSS points. So you are, need all these details and the, they, they can be only represented when you are drawing a larger scale chart. Now, when you come down to the small scale chart, it is exactly opposite, whereby you are representing a larger region, a larger size of region on the same size of chart and hence you are scaling it down or you are making the scale smaller and in that case since the scale is being reduced hence you cannot represent that region with similar amount of details that you were doing it for the large scale chart and hence these charts by the nature of their drawing are usually used in the coastal or in the sorry in the open sea navigation now 
That being said, another basic type of division of chart is on the depth and elevation measurement space. Suppose the, in, the, these divisions are in two types basically, the metric charts and the fathom charts. In metric charts, these depths and elevations and underpasses are being measured in meters and in fathom charts, the same things are measured in feet. So, when we uh, now in the another term which we could have uh, I could have uh, memorized in my mind is say leading lights. Now leading lights is another basic term which we need to understand. And in that section, uh, I would start off saying is uh, those who have uh, done a bit of staring out of you people, when you stare the vessel, whoever is in command or who is giving you the orders might be a master or might be an officer on board or might be a pilot. The usual terms of uh, order comes down as the helm order or the rudder order, whereby when, you are, when a rudder order is being followed, the order is of a kind where they, they say to you that, okay, hard starboard, okay, ease it to 30, okay, ease down to zero, okay, midship and all. So those are rudder orders basically. Another type of orders while steering we usually get is the helm orders or the course orders where they say, okay, steer 275, okay, make it 278, okay, come down to 272. So these are a kind of course orders. Now these are general orders that you get when you are steering the vessel. A specific kind of order sometimes comes down to, uh, to you to be followed and that comes down especially when you are approaching a channel or making a sharp turn into the channel. And that order is of a kind whereby you are shown two lights ahead and they say, okay, you can see those lights, just take those lights on your head and steer the vessel. Now those lights that are being shown to you are your leading lights and they have a very specific feature when you keep those lights on your head and you steer the vessel then you obviously enter the channel or make a sharp turn in the channel exactly midway through the passage which is very important because the safest route in a channel or by turning in a channel is the middle of the channel because that is the place where maximum depth in the channel is available and that is why it is so important to keep the vessel in exactly center of the channel so far as possible. So those lights are the ones which are leading your passage into that channel in this way and hence they are known as leading lights. And their structure is a very specific one. They are two in numbers usually and separated by a distance and the rare one is usually the raised one. So this will be the raised on a platform and this will be say closer to ground. So they will be at a height difference and also at a horizontal distance. Now the point is, when you keep them in one single line, they will give you a transit bearing. Transit bearing is the one which comes by, by two lighthouses, one behind the other. So they are giving, do you have to stay them in such a way that they are seen one behind the other in single ali alignment. And when you stay in such a way, then they will give you a transit bearing and you have to maintain that bearing and then stay your vessel. Another thing is, their structure is such because of a purpose. Because sometimes, especially in daylight, a single light to keep consistently on your head and stare is a very difficult thing. But when they are on true in numbers, then their identification is very simple. And it comes down to as, a, as, as an easy way where you can you know, keep these two lights one behind the other and stare the vessel a bit easily. And since the height difference is there, so even if you say, suppose uh, there is a difference of height and where the identification becomes easier, especially in night. So their flashing will be a bit distinctive in comparison to the, uh, say, hundreds of show lights that is visible around. So even if you get to miss the light somewhere down the other, it, and you are, it is easy to relocate it. That is why this, the, the purpose of these two lights is being resolved. So I hope these basics would have helped you and uh, I will see you next time most probably with some basics of another good subject which is stability in a field till then. Have a nice day. See you next time. Bye. If you have any questions or suggestions, please drop your comments below and we will get back to you at the earliest. If you like this video, Please subscribe to Marine Insight channel and press the bell icon to get notified when we post such amazing videos. Please like, comment and share this video and do not forget to subscribe to our channel.